welcome back again to uh, Crafty and D. Today we're going to talk about what to bring on your next adventure. Now, whether you're using the um, arms and equipment guide from like second edition, or you have your player's handbook with your equipment list, or your fifth edition equipment list, or whatever system you might be running, um, usually your character has some kind of equipment that they need to bring with them, whether it be a dagger or a space laser. They usually have something that they want to bring along. It's one of the things I always enjoyed about character creation is the actual equipment group that we together with. It's a bit like planning a camping trip, only with weapons. So you get to pick your figure out what you're actually going to need to, to bring along. Sadly, though, in like five... Fifth edition, it seems like there's a lot of de-emphasis on that. Um, if you ever play, played any fifth edition, basically you have a background. Your background gets a pack, and that pack is kind of what you have, which is kind of weird. I mean, I've even played with uh, players who are, you say, hey, does anybody have a crowbar? One of the packs has a crowbar in it. And players will say, I don't know. Is it in my pack? Because they've written literally on their character sheet that they have, this particular pack, I have a priest pack, an explorer's pack, whatever. They don't even bother to read the description on the pack to see what's in there. And the description's right there in the book. It's not like it's hard to find. It's right in the equipment section. So they just don't even know. So if you are playing one of those editions and you're just given a pack, please write down what's in the pack. Don't just write down you, you have a pack like that. Um, but it's a lot more fun just to pick the things out yourselves using, you know, one of the guides. But yeah, I once played a character who was like obsessed with daggers. Constantly take one when, when they ever come across either for a combat, find them for sale, find them that he could get, however he could, he could get one. He wanted to take that dagger. Um, it was his primary weapon and he would throw them. So, and of course, after combat, go and retrieve them. So it made sense that he would need a lot of them. Uh, in kind of case, a lot of times you throw them and you never get it back. Uh, so, and I've had to play the character also who had like the barest essential. That was the character decision I made for that guy. He like had his weapon, his armor, and an empty sack. That's how he started the, the uh, adventure. Plenty of gold, of course. We well, just kind of like tried to find things along the way to, to get things just to work for him. Uh, occasionally, I would even dump the sack out. And it's like, okay, dumping the sack out, keeping this, this, and this, and the rest of it I'm just tossing. And so the other players were really like, oh, I want that or that. But uh, they quickly learned, though, not to give that character anything important to the quest. Because there was a chance... He was going to throw her away, kind of like a reverse Kender, or Kender's constantly taking things, while well, he was constantly throwing throwing it, so. And very rarely took anything, I and mean, just, I guess, kind of like a reverse Kender. Choosing your own equipment. So it's not only fun, but it can be the difference between your, you know, your group delving deep into that dungeon and getting the treasure, and having to lick your wounds and try again, or having a total party wipe, which occasionally can happen. New players often don't realize how important their equipment really is, or they don't take into consideration where they're headed. So if you're going to plan a camping trip, for example, in January up in the north, you know, or there's snow and there's blizzards, and yes, I've done this. So you go camping in the wintertime, you bring along the proper tent, you bring along the proper clothes, you uh, just don't go with your shorts and t-shirt, light blanket, and expect that you're going to be fine. Now, obviously, you have to pack for the environment. The same with your, with your character in the game. You, your character needs to pack for the environment. So the dungeon or the environment they're headed into, whether it's a traditional dungeon or a wilderness setting or an urban setting, should really dictate what your character has on their initial loadout. Um, every environment has its own requirements, especially, you know, your character should be doing some research first, you know, and just not ha kind of have an idea. Okay, we're headed towards the mountains. Okay, what kind of weather does the mountains have this time of year? Your character should kind of know that. We're headed to the desert. Your character should have some idea of how to survive there or be hiring someone that does. If you're headed to the uh, abandoned wizard's tower, for example... Uh, you might want to check the local resources, if there's a local library, a sage, um, just people who, in, in general, who know the area. They might have you able to tell you how many 10-foot poles you're going to need to pack. I mean, you might need to bring one. You don't know. Uh, so, of course, I'm gonna kinda, I, I kind of focus on first edition rules here, but... Uh, 
the general principles definitely apply to every um, version of Dungeons and Dragons as well as any any other role playing game. Um, there's also the concept of encumbrance. Uh, that's kind of a topic by itself. Loosely speaking, you, obviously your character can't take a whole bunch of stuff with them. So you kind of have to pick. What should your character have? What should be written down on your character sheet? In my games, at least. If it's not on your character sheet, you don't have it. You can't suddenly say, ah, no, I brought 14 uh, days of rations. I just didn't write it down. I'm like, I guess you left it. You forgot to bring it with after all. So like I already said, be aware of the weather where you're headed. Uh, bring water skins, blankets. Uh, have an idea about the monsters. Uh, you, you, do you need a mace? Will, will, will there be skeletons? Should you have, you know, have the right w weapon for the right occasion? Do you need holy water? How about Wolfsbane, Belladonna? It's a good idea to have an idea of what you might be facing. Obviously, you can get surprised. It could be a random creature, in which case everybody should kind of have a little bit of something to kind of support each other. You kind of have an idea, too. Provisions. How, many, how much food did she really bring? Just a few days' worth? You go into a desert environment and no one knows how to survive there, you might need more than a few days' worth. You might need a lot more water. Uh, so if you're going into that dungeon setting, bring chalk. That way you can mark where you're going. A few discrete chalk marks here and there can mean the difference between your party finding their way out and getting further and further lost. If you're a thief, uh, you want to bring along tools, uh, thieves' tools and oil, um, scroll maps, uh, or scroll cases for maps or scrolls you might come across. Uh, bring spikes. Uh, they're not just for climbing, they're great to keep a door shut. And some kind of hammer, of course, is always useful. If nothing else, the back of your axe might be able to work as a hammer, but make sure you check with the DM before you go out and don't just assume. So something I like to do, in addition to the backpack and whatnot for my general character, not my weird ones, is have a belt pouch that they always have on them that's attached to them. That way if they lose their backpack, they always have this belt pouch. And this belt pouch contains some basic essentials like a tinderbox, candles, iron rations, spike, uh, some chalk, a spare dagger. If they have a silvered dagger, that would be in that belt pouch. Um, and then whatever they have, like any potions, uh, an important one, a healing potion or something like that, that would definitely be in there. It wouldn't be in the backpack. And then um, it's also where they would keep their scroll case. Uh, sealed with wax from the candle, so any papers they come across would go with you know, the wax would be br broke. Papers go in, and then a new wax seal. That way, if they get submerged in water, the papers are going to be fine because they're in that bone case with a wax plug on it. So generally speaking, that should be able to survive for years underwater. And if I were playing a wizard, as long as I could get my DM to okay it. That bone case with the papers in it and the wax plug, that would be his spell book. I wouldn't have a traditional book of any sort. The actual, well, the spell book would be just that. So in the backpack, then, is where I would throw, like, the some extra rations, the water skins, rope, axe torches, uh, extra rope, even more rope. I've even went so far as to have rope ladders before in my backpack, just because I knew there'd be lots of climbing. And we didn't want to have a risk or chance of someone slipping and falling. So we'd like so we'd, we'd, the one person that could climb well, the thief, climb on up, drop down that rope ladder, everybody else just go right up like they're walking upstairs. So it just makes things a lot simpler if you have a kind of plan ahead like that. Um, one neat thing, too, is like a med kit. After all, the cleric might go down. So in addition to like your potion of healing, you might want to keep like... You know, whatever your DM or your gaming system says is important to bring somebody up. Make sure that, you know, more than one character has that on them and, and not just rely on the cleric to just be constantly throwing heals. Because you're going to run out of spell slots, they might go down, you might be split apart from them for some reason. There's lots of reasons that the cleric might not be able to heal, or the cleric might need healing. And, of course, if you have a pack animal with saddlebags and stuff like that, uh, wagons, you can start bringing all kinds of stuff. Once you go into that dungeon, you're going to be limited, once again, though, to what you can actually put on yourself without getting too over-encumbered, because you're going to want to carry that treasure out you, with you. 
you're probably going to want a henchman there at the at your campsite guarding your giant wagon that you're with your animals and stuff. And I hope you paid him well, too, because otherwise he'll take off with your stuff. So something to keep in mind, of course. And regarding encumbrance, I don't like encumbrance too much unless it's ridiculous. I kind of ignore it myself as a DM. Purely from a bookkeeping perspective, it's easiest if you just write down the uh, maximum weight a backpack can have and then write down the weight of the items in it. And as long as it's reasonable that it should be fine. If it becomes to the point where you're saying, I'm taking this big, huge statue and putting it in my backpack, then we talk about encumbrance. Or if you have like a hundred swords in there, or if your quiver has 200 arrows in it, unless it's a, uh, it makes sense with the system or the DM just doesn't care at all, then, you know, some of those things are just common sense. Just don't do the old halfling joke where the halfling, you know, packs his backpack, giant backpack, three times the size of a halfling. He struggles into it. He gets out. He starts out from his house to head out on an adventure. Trips, falls, rolls down a hill, gets killed. Stuff gets scattered everywhere. Yeah, you don't want to do that. So, But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, do the YouTube thing. Like, share, subscribe, all that kind of stuff. And uh, whatever you do, don't forget that 10-foot pole. Bye. Thanks.